Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is about atomic structure and is part one of two videos. Okay, so we know that everything is made up of atoms and if we look at a particular element, let's say sodium, and if I have a block of sodium here, all the atoms in that piece of sodium will be sodium atoms. It's a solid at room temperature, so the atoms are going to be arranged like this. And all the atoms are sodium atoms, so we can look at any one of them and we'll see the same structure. So let's take this one and let's have a look at the structure of it. Okay, here we go. So we can see that in the nucleus, in the center, that's the nucleus there, and I'll just label that as the nucleus. So the nucleus is in the center and it contains protons and neutrons. So I have uh, representations of protons, neutrons and electrons here. The red ones are the protons, the blue ones are the neutrons, and the green ones are the electrons. So in the center, in the nucleus, it contains protons and neutrons, and orbiting around the nucleus, it has electrons. Now, if we go to the periodic table and we find the symbol for sodium, that's Na, and then there are two numbers above and below. Sometimes the numbers are in opposite places, and sometimes you only see one of those numbers. But in this case, the one I'm showing you here has a 23 at the top and the 11 at the bottom. And the symbol itself tells us about the structure of the atom. So the smaller number is called the proton number. So that there is called the proton number. And it's also called the atomic number as well. So slash atomic number. So that's the smaller number there, 11. The larger number is called the atomic mass number. Atomic mass number. Or sometimes just called the mass number. And it tells us the number of protons plus neutrons. So the proton number tells us how many protons we have and the atomic mass number tells us the protons plus the neutrons. So what about the electrons? How do we know how many electrons we have? Well, an atom always has the same number of protons as electrons. So the proton number will also tell us how many electrons there are. So let's have a look at our sodium atom and have a look at how many of each subatomic particle we have. So from the proton number, we know we have 11 protons and the protons are the red ones. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's 11 protons. What about the neutrons? Well, if the mass number is 23, and that tells us the protons plus the neutrons, and we know that we have 11 protons, then that means the number of neutrons must be 12 in order to make up 23 in total because 11 plus 12 will be 23. So we count up the number of neutrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 blue neutrons. And if we have 11 protons, then we must also have 11 electrons. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 electrons. And the arrangement of the electrons will be covered in part two, so we don't need to worry just yet. And we can do this for any element. So let's take carbon. The symbol is a C. The mass number is 12 and the proton number is 6. So we can figure out how many protons, electrons and neutrons there are in carbon. So first of all, the proton number is 6. So we know we have 6 protons. And if we have 6 protons, then we must have also 6 electrons. 
Now, as for the neutrons, we know that the mass number is 12. And the mass number is the neutrons and the protons combined. So the sum of the protons and the neutrons is 12. And we know that we've got six protons. So if we subtract them, we know that we would have six neutrons in the nucleus because six plus six would give us 12, which is the mass number. Now we need to know a bit more about subatomic particles. We need to know their relative charges and their relative masses. So if we look at each one in turn, protons, neutrons, and electrons, we see that the protons have a relative charge of plus one. So they're positively charged. The neutrons are neutral, which means they have no charge. And that's an easy way of remembering the fact that they're called neutrons and that they are neutral. And the electrons have a minus one charge, so they are negatively charged. And that's why the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons in an atom, so that the overall charge is zero. So in our carbon example, when we had six protons and six electrons, that would give a plus, uh, plus six charge and a minus six charge, which would overall be zero. And all atoms have to have an overall charge of zero. So protons plus one, neutrons no charge, electrons minus one. And then we have relative mass. So protons and neutrons are the same size, so they have a relative mass of one and one. Electrons, on the other hand, have much, much less mass. In fact, it's one eighteen hundredth of the mass of a proton or a neutron. So really, we don't even count the mass of the electrons when we calculate the mass number, because it's so small that it becomes negligible and we don't include it in the mass number. So you need to know the relative charges of each of these subatomic particles and the relative masses of the subatomic particles as well. You also need to be able to determine the number of protons, electrons and neutrons from the symbol that you would find in the periodic table. Okay, so that was just a quick video, part one of two videos on atomic structure. The second video will, will be about the arrangement of electrons in an atom. So as always, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and tune in for part two.